All right, what's up, everybody? We are on season one, episode four of the Attack on Titan rewatch. This episode is called Night of the Graduation Ceremony. So I talked in the last episode, episode three, which was fantastic to rewatch, but I talked about how originally I kind of looked at episode three as well as four here. Uh, you know, when I watched it the first time around as filler, or at least maybe not filler, but like getting ready and therefore not like getting ready for the real story to begin, I guess, and therefore not finding it too exciting the first time around which you know i think it's fair to point that out as like that is the mindset that a newcomer is most likely going to have when they don't know what the show is about yet and they haven't warmed up to the characters yet and they don't understand the purpose of every scene that's planted there um because you know as a first time viewer some of these scenes can come across a little bit like unimportant when they aren't in fact at all they're super important they all have a purpose but it's hard to understand it when you don't understand the background of a lot of these characters yet um that being said the interesting thing about this fourth episode now is that i remember very little about it there's only two things that i remember about it that i can point out i know that aaron is going to have this conversation with annie here and annie is going to kind of point out that the whole system doesn't make sense with um the military police and the survey uh, corps and i don't Again, I can't quite put it into words anymore. I remember thinking, oh yeah, she makes a lot of sense uh, when it comes to this. Whereas people then pointed out to me, I remember somehow that I do still remember, but like they originally pointed out to me, no, it actually doesn't for some reason. <laughs> That's literally all I can say. And then the second thing that I know is that, um, yeah, the Colossal Titan shows back up at the very end of the episode, which leads into, I think, the battle that episode five is then going to uh, be where Aaron dies and uh, Psych Mikasa is the main character. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like that, that episode I clearly remember very well. But here, this fourth episode, I remember very little about it, which makes it all the more fascinating because I love, especially about these first couple episodes here, how it's laying the foundation and it's putting those first pieces of um, teasing out there that when you do know what the story is ultimately going to be, you will appreciate that so much more. Just the little line of Keith in the third episode talking about Grisha. Um, you know, the, the, the conversation that Historia had with Emea, where Emea was catching on to what she was doing in the moment. Uh, you know, Sasha and a potato and you know, understanding that that was going to be a recurring theme. All those things, right? So... I'm looking forward a lot to diving in here, especially to find out if there is going to be a bunch of stuff here, perhaps, that... Um, yeah, we'll be able to achieve that same uh, that same effect for me. So uh, that being said, of course, if you enjoy these uh, you know rewatch reaction videos for Attack on Titan, we do a bonus episode every single week over on Patreon. There's uh, you know videos being uploaded twice a week over there, which is linked on top of the description, of course. Uh, over there, we should now already be on episode 16, actually. So you can catch up all the way on the next 12 episodes immediately. Uh, yeah, and like I said, get a bonus episode every week, extra content like OVAs, of course, that are still up there, but also new ones that I'm going to be reacting to once we finish season one, some, uh, you know, some other exclusive bonus videos, uh, like me reacting to the openings and endings with their lyrics. So definitely go and check that out. And then for now, let's actually dive into episode four of Attack on Titan. <laughs> One thing that I actually still wonder about is why was this called the year 845? Was that just the lie that was being um, sold to all of them? And why 845? Is there a significance to that? Because again, the whole timeline obviously spans 2000 years. Hmm, so it's now the year 850, yeah. So five years have passed since the beginning. <laughs> Still giving on and shit. Yeah, just like last time. Calling him Titan food. Uh, and Reiner helping him just like he did in the female Titan expedition. Wow. Yeah. Oh, here we go. I don't know about the mental part. <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh about that. <laughs> but it kind of is funny. He's still strong mentally though, but... Because it was a lot weighing on him. 
Oh yeah, the Tony practice. Lacks initiative? That's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, he really went. Oh, right. This is where we actually get the, like, results, maybe? Oh, maybe actually that was, like, episode 16. This is what I'm curious about. This is already called the graduation ceremony, but they didn't fully... They didn't get their capes and everything up until episode 16, I remember. It's funny how they do kind of group them up together correctly. Somewhat. Like Annie, Reiner and Berthold were in, in a streak. Yeah, Mikasa and Eren now. Sean, Connie and... Sasha. Oh yeah, he sure is motivated. Yeah, again, I, you know, it's just, this, this was just the description of all these characters and their physical abilities, mainly, right? Which I remember not seeing much of a purpose to in the beginning when I watched it once again. But it's great looking back at it now. <laughs> oh, what? それは無責任ってもんだ。それよりおい、見ろ。ああ、兄か。よし、エレン。あの不真面目な奴にも説教だ。兵士とはどうあるべきか。わあ、of Maybe to create some, some like, to create the thought that there is distance between them. It would make sense that, you know, he would not be uh, acting friendly with her. Oh yeah, and he will beat the shit out of you there. <laughs> she must be thinking I'm so tired of your shit, Rhino. <laughs> and now I'm gonna give you shit. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sometimes a soldier can't retreat. <laughs> Love it. Oh, wow. She? Okay, well, she spoke the truth. Yeah, I mean, and now I remember people did explain it as like, well, they're just protecting the higher class people, which makes sense. But yeah, it's not exactly, uh, you could look at that as not being the most moral, maybe, you know, like, it's all of us or none of us, but with these guys, it's more like, you know, pe some people have higher priorities, so to put it. お、<笑><笑> 
Well, I was gonna say, Jean did point out he literally wanted that, you know, he was okay with it. Aaron does see how it's unfair, obviously. I mean, Aaron did learn to control himself much more through the show, but he's still not quite there yet. <laughs> oh yeah, they blame it on Sasha or something, or what was it? <laughs> I remember that, yeah. It's cool how I do, like, well, I find it cool how I do remember some of the specifics still. First time we heard that line, wasn't it? I still don't feel like trying to repeat it, though. Yeah. It was so much information to take in initially, man. Uh, this is so good though. <laughs> Was Sean looking at Aaron? Oh, here we go. Chris, the Sasha, Connie, Marco, Jean. So it was this episode where we got the top 10. Aaron, Annie, Bertolt, Reiner, Mikasa. Yeah, great, great, great. That was a that was a big giveaway right there, actually, when you think about it. Isn't this is this the same place where they were sitting in the season three part one finale? I think it is. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense that he has a better, like, theoretical death score. Yep, she will follow you wherever you go. Ellen <laughs> Okay, yeah, so that was a brief little tease already at the fact that she had lost family. Which I guess, you know, you could have figured because she was living with Aaron's family, but something that hadn't really caught on to me, I think. Oh. Oh, uh, now, now we see Levi. <laughs> Great entry line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of did talk about that, like... Okay, well, Hannah's apologized here again. Okay, yeah, Aaron never really took it that personally. I do recall that time where he went like, Go back to work, Hannes. <laughs> Was it Aaron's speech? Oh, okay, okay. Cool how Aaron directly affected that and, uh, you know, is the reason why Connie is here, essentially. You know, I don't quite remember because we see Thomas Wagner here a lot, but I don't really remember his character. <laughs> Sasha bringing meat again. It might sound a little harsh, but I wonder when Wagner dies then, because I assume he does. Because I don't recall. Oh, 
Yeah, and Berthold isn't here. Mm, yeah, don't get too cocky now, Aaron, but I know you will. We got this. Yeah, I remember that. Flash. <laughs> I was like, holy fuck! <laughs> so didn't see that coming. Oh, man. And the immediate smoke blowing everybody off. Fantastic. Oh, shit. Wow. Go Sasha. Is he still... Is this guy still alive, though? <laughs> so Rhino already went through it. Well, it's easy to understand why they just showed up here <laughs> when they were with you all this time, right? <laughs> oh my god. It all makes so much sense now. Love this music theme as well. Yeah, so epic. Oh man. Yeah, I think the biggest conclusion that this episode has made me reach is just the, 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 the dead giveaways that are actually present in some of these episodes about, yeah, about the identity of, of some of the people in here, right? Um, that's, I think, the thing. When you think back about your mindset going into the show early on, which I try to do a lot now for these rewatch reactions, right? And just thinking about where was I and what was I thinking in the moment. I could have never expected that it was going to be this story. Even regarding the Titans, you could have never expected that there were humans behind that or something, right? That was a very um, natural process that you had to go through to start understanding that later on. It wasn't until... I don't know in what episode it really does become clear that these big titans are like humans. Um, but, I mean, it isn't until you discover Annie's identity, I guess, or something, right? That, that, that she at least is the first. So, but I feel like it might be, again, it might be a little bit earlier than that that you do basically start to realize that. Here you don't whatsoever yet. You're just, I mean, my mindset simply was wondering... Okay, when are we going to start taking some of these titans down, right? And like this colossal titan, how do we bring him down? Th these were kind of the things that I was wondering. And why did he appear out of nowhere? But I would have never thought like, oh, could it be a human in this moment again? Who, who, who is that titan? So now if you're going back and watching this episode, again, you see the couple of like... Um, well, I don't know if necessarily finding out how uh, uh, Reiner and Berthold and Annie are so skilled and are on top of this list... It's not necessarily a dead giveaway, I guess. I mean, you can't do much with that information because you can literally see that they are skilled. But it's like, now it is funny to look back at it, of course, because they've had some additional training, let's put it like that. Uh, yeah, but, you know, the other, I think the other sort of um, cool... Well, yeah, again, I'm not sure whether to call it a giveaway or not, but, like, you can just tell that those characters, they're also absent here in the scene uh, at the very end, where they're all taking care of the wall there there is no Berthold there is no Reiner in sight we we also saw how one of the gates was already crushed in that moment so he must have done that again um <laughs> and so you know it's 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 them being gone which means that they are the ones obviously responsible for that um yeah I myself was was wondering in that moment again like how did this titan appear out of nowhere because it seemed to just be this this lightning flash and then suddenly he was there so that's one of the things I remember pointing out and people kind of giving me credit for in the uh, at the time like okay you're definitely thinking in the right direction Robin so I <laughs> I remember appreciating that in the moment but uh, but now it it just again it it all makes so much sense it's so obvious that like okay yeah it's because they were gone there that they were also clearly the titans uh or you know the guys that were actually the titans attacking here i don't know if i'm still making sense here but it's it's you know it's cool to see of course the first glimpse um well not the first necessarily of erwin but the first glimpse of levi at least <laughs> and him immediately saying shut up speaks volumes about his character of course um 
Hannes, which, you know, Aaron had a conversation with, and I kind of talked about that too, how it's, you know, it was interesting to me to see how Aaron did forgive Hannes. Um, you know, even though, I don't know, I could have seen that go a different way, I guess. Um, there's that scene where they're all sitting on top of the uh, the stairs, which, you know, I think that's, that's the exact same spot that we saw them sitting at back in... Um, yeah, back in the season three part one finale, I think, right? And, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, the show constantly is grouping, you know, like characters up together. So even in the introductions, it's like Berthold, Reiner and Annie kind of all go hand in hand. Uh, uh, Jean, Co uh, Connie and Sasha go hand in hand. Aaron and Mikasa are together, right? And it's like, it's it already putting them already together here in some of these scenes. Um, yeah, it's just funny to see because you know that all of them kind of come in those themes later on too. Uh, maybe the last thing that I can talk about is that conversation that Aaron had with Annie, which I already did remember. Um, I understand now why people initially said to me that it wasn't really that weird. It's just a certain setup that the people here in this, uh, in this, in this, on Paradise Island chose to go with, where yes, we, we just saw that that was the case, where there were people with higher status who therefore lived in, in the, in the, uh, closer rings and other people couldn't get there right we already the show had already established that that was the case and so the people living in the most outer rings were basically the cannon fodder and the the, the people that would first you know the first victims of any um titan invasions so therefore the system also does make sense that they would obviously have the most skilled people protecting the most inner rings first or, uh, or whatever you know just be there at least so that in the emergency situation they would have the best defense possible there um, and they wouldn't just waste them on their outer rings which are much harder to defend in the first place too because they're so big right so yeah i mean it's just that Aaron sees how that system is and it's a little bit well, I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit of a sidetrack in a way because it doesn't matter for the bigger picture of what the story is going to be ultimately. But uh, Aaron sees there too. And Aaron is very ideologically driven and trying to change the world, right? And make it a better place and stuff. Um, yeah, that it also makes sense that Aaron therefore understands now that there is this system and that it's not really fair. So, you know, I, I, get, I get what they were trying to do there. But again, I do also feel like some of those things in a way are a bit of a distraction here at first for the beginning of the show for you to think you know to not start asking yourselves the real bigger questions yet that are going to play a much more important role later on it's so cool how it's done that because at the time i did remember finding it fascinating and trying to understand that and yeah i myself suspected the military police early on a lot right i'm like oh these guys are in on it themselves and in a way that wasn't a wrong thought to have because there were some people up there who were in on it to some extent. That didn't mean they were uh, necessarily our enemies. I mean, I still don't know who our enemies are, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like, um, yeah, again, some some people had more knowledge. That's basically what it's about, right? I mean, that's what the whole show was about. It's about um, finding out who had more knowledge and what they could share with me to understand the full scope of it all. So. Yeah, it's it's so fantastic, but uh, man, I, I'm already again, I'm already loving going back, uh, diving into these episodes and seeing what I sort of missed out on watching it the first time around because there's honestly so much I could have never understood the full scope of a lot of these scenes the first time around, and so I really do appreciate that. Of course, guys, if you appreciate these reaction videos uh you'll be able to get a bonus episode every week over on patreon which is linked on top of the description over there we do uh two reaction videos every week you can already watch you know what is it by now uh, i think it is the next uh, 16 episodes right yeah or up until episode 16 i should say you can already uh, check out right now so that's actually the next 12 that are up there bonus videos ovas full-length reactions if you want to see me react to the entire episodes of course it's all up there so uh, yeah, definitely check it out. And then for now, I want to thank you all for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you back in the next episode.